Hail and well met, old friend. We shall now commence the second phase of Operation Shield. The plan is as follows. Save Psy ADV and enter Steins Gate. A path has finally been opened in the form of the Steam release codenamed SG0. Memorize the details of this disclaimer well. The review copy of the following videos based off of might have been supported by the publisher, but you can trust this man's passion. However, under no circumstance must you watch any further without knowledge of Steins Gate. Zero expects you to know the events of the original, and spoiling yourself could mean that our path to the gate will be lost forever. Best of luck to you. L. Sai. Kongru. We all experience something in our lives that shape us into the people we are today. For me, that was watching Steins Gate back in 2012. The anime adaptation of the hit visual novel quickly became near and dear to my heart, and was what got me into my favorite franchise, the Science Adventure series, also known as Psy ADV. Steins Gate was released in Japan on October 9th, 2009, and was finally localized on March 13th, 2014. Six years after the release of Steins Gate, a new game was announced, acting as both a sequel and an interquel. Steins Gate Zero released in Japan on December 10th, 2015, and received a localization on consoles in November 2000. 2016 from P-Cube. I actually reviewed Zero for a site I wrote for when it came out, but since then, Spike Chunsoft has acquired the license for Steins Adventure games in the West, and they're coming out of the gates strong with the upcoming lineup of Steins Gate Elite, Steins Gate Linear Bounded Phenogram, and a Steam release of Steins Gate Zero to coincide with the currently airing anime. For many people, this year will be their first time experiencing Steins Gate Zero, so I want to delve deeper than just discussing the quality of the port. I'll be using this opportunity to give my updated thoughts on Zero as a whole, now that I've played through it a second time. August 21st, 2010. In the beta world line, Okabe Rintaro travels back in time to try to save the woman he loves, Makise Kurisu. With World War III on the horizon, the fate of the world rests on Okabe's shoulders. His first trip through time is a complete failure. He's about to give up hope when, all of a sudden, he receives a video message from his future self. This push is what convinced Okabe to pick himself up, save the world, and reach the Steins Gate world line. But what about the Okabe from the beta world line? What led him to send that video message? These are the questions Steins Gate Zero answers. Three months after failing to save Kurisu, Okabe has become a shadow of his former self. He's developed an extreme case of PTSD from both his overuse of the Time Leap Machine and accidentally killing Kurisu. Vivid and horrifying flashbacks to his failed rescue mission constantly plague Okabe, forcing him to rely on medication and therapy to ease the pain. The extravagant mad scientist Ho-Ween Kyoma is dead, and he's distanced himself from his friends and the future Gadgets Lab in an attempt to live his life in peace. However, fate has other plans for him, as he soon discovers that Kurisu's old memories were used as a basis for an experimental and stunningly realistic AI known as Amadeus. From there, Okabe is thrust back into a world of conspiracy he never wanted to be a part of again. Okabe's depressed, melancholic personality is possibly Zero's biggest strength, and feels like the most natural progression for his character. After seeing the events of Steins Gate through his eyes, the players can easily understand how he ended up in this broken state. And while hints of the Okabe fans grew to love are definitely there, Zero sticks to its guns with the new direction Okabe's character has taken. Listen, I know a lot of people like to roll their eyes when someone talks about gameplay and visual novels, but like all entries in the Science Adventure series, Steins Gate Zero has a unique take on the VN formula. The story's paths are decided by specific events involving Okabe's phone, which can be taken out at any time. There aren't traditional dialogue choices, so there's a lot of reading and kind of minimal player input. But if you've played through Steins Gate, chances are you're already used to that. The email system has been replaced by the new Rhine messaging app. Here, you can choose how to respond to your friends' messages and even send them these cute little stickers. The more observant ones in the audience might notice that all Rhine stickers and the phone UI have been completely translated thanks to Spike Chunsoft, which is something that P-Cube's original release lacked. The Rhine system is neat, but doesn't actually affect the plot, and more or less serves the same purpose as the emails did to flesh out characters outside the game's main scenario. Having said that, plot progression has been streamlined compared to its predecessor, and I think this is for the best. Steins Gate had one main path that would branch off slightly depending on the emails you responded to and when you choose to use your phone. 
The Utura Ning is notoriously pretty hard to get without a walkthrough, and requires specific flags that were based on precise responses to emails. To switch things up, Steins Gate Zero features two main routes, and the paths branch into side routes based on how you respond to certain phone calls, most relating to Amadeus. These two routes are completely different in terms of story, and even cleverly subvert your expectations of each other. All in all, I think Steins Gate Zero takes advantage of its medium a lot better than Steins Gate ever did. Most of Steins Gate's side endings were just romance-based, and didn't really provide the player with anything significant to the overarching plot. I'm happy that Zero expanded upon the side endings, and each one legitimately feels like it adds something important to the story. Definitely go into this game blind on your first run, and after whatever ending you get, I recommend using Reading Steiner's flowchart from then on out, which can be found in the description below. On a pure visual level, this game is a huge step up from Steins Gate. The text boxes and UI are leagues better, and ooze with a charm because of its weathered, moody aesthetic. It's clear that Huke's artistic skill has drastically improved since he worked on the original game, because the new character art all looks great. And before the Shaman Girl Brigade shows up in the comments, Liskinen's is of course the best. Hey boy, what's up? Japanese Shaman Girl, uh, doko ni irundai, Rintaro? Luckily, the sprites weren't the only thing to get some love, because the backgrounds are just as fantastic as they were in Steins Gate, if not better. Thing is, as much as I love the new visual tone Zero goes for, I still have a few bones to pick. There's some reused portraits from the original game that are a little lazy, and inconsistent CG quality can stick out like a sore thumb. During certain parts of the game, some characters revert back to their older sprites, which is really jarring when next to the new and improved ones. I really wish they were just redrawn to avoid that nitpick altogether. Honestly, the CG quality isn't something I can get too mad at, considering most VNs use multiple artists to draw CGs. Still, a bit of consistency would have gone a long way. I'm sure fans of visual novels know just how important sound design is in this genre, so you're probably wondering how Zero stacks up. And let me tell you, it's real good. The soundtrack for Steins Gate Zero might just be one of my favorite OSTs from Takeshi Abo. The score knows when to sound haunting, it knows when to sound emotional, and it knows when to get your heart pumping. The entire OST is on a much grander scale than the original, but the score excels at highlighting the more lighthearted moments as well. Zero's relaxing, calm, and silly scenes give the plot room to breathe, and are only so effective thanks to Abba's versatility as a composer. There are four vocal tracks, a single OP, and three EDs. Unfortunately, none of these EDs are sung by Phantasm, so Steins Gate Zero gets a zero out of ten. <laughs> Nah, just kidding. All the EDs sound great and hold their own when compared to their contemporaries, especially the new vocal version of Gate of Steiner. Oh my god. And, well, I really don't think I need to spend much time on discussing the voice acting. The entire cast kills it, but I have to say, Okabe's voice actor, Mamoru Miyano, completely steals the show and nails his character's new direction. Wow, a main character in a science adventure game with great voice acting? Ooh, what a surprise! Okay, to diverge real quick, I'd like to briefly talk about what's been improved in Spike Chunsoft's port, and what I wish was added. The most notable improvement is the team's previously mentioned work in translating every Ryan sticker, and the UI on Okabe's phone, but the script also received another editing pass. They've gone back and cleaned up some of the spelling errors, but I did notice that the beta build I was provided still had the occasional grammatical issue. At the current state, this release also maintains some of the quirks of Steins Gate Zero's original translation, like the names being switched to first name last name, which doesn't line up to the original game's translation. Two other odd translation choices that remain are Kyoma being spelled K-Y-O-M-A, which is really just an issue with consistency, but the major one I noticed was Operation Arclight being mistranslated still as Operation Aquila. I'm sure though that any script issue that haven't been addressed can be ironed out over time, so I'm happy to say the port's current state looks, sounds, and plays like a charm. I mentioned story earlier, but I think it's important to go into the characterization of both the returning and new characters. Steins Gate works so well because it has a unique and multi-dimensional cast that drives the story forward. The returning cast is compelling and ever-present, and the game never goes overboard with their characterization. 
slightly annoying characters like Daru and Ferris get a good amount of screen time, and I appreciated their roles in the story far more than I did after finishing the original game. Mayuri is given a massive character arc, which improves upon an already fantastic character. Not every character who returns gets a significant arc, but everyone gets a moment to shine, making none of the characters feel out of place or useless. Kurosu's friend Maho and the shaman girl me man himself, Alexis Liskinen, Holy cow! Japanese shaman Rintaro! Contribute to the scientific elements of Zero's plot and are a welcome addition. Hell, the same could be said about pretty much all the other newcomers. There are a couple things I'd like to touch on before sharing my thoughts on the ending, namely the pacing and POV changes. Visual novels can have it rough, having to rely on strong pacing to effectively tell their stories. Steins Gate is often criticized by having a really slow first half that takes ages to pick up, which is something I disagree with as the setup is intentional and vital in making the second half as great as it is, but I digress. And it seems like the developers took note of this. The beginning of Zero moves at a much quicker pace and even jumps days at a time during transitions, instead of the day-by-day -day approach the original took. Only after splitting off into the main two routes does the game slow down and feel a bit more natural, but to be honest, I found myself appreciating this new pacing more and more this time around. It keeps things interesting and rarely wastes the player's time. It seems Steins Gate Zero took a couple of notes from Chaos Child's playbook, which predates it by a year. Side tangent, Chaos Child is one of the greatest works of fiction ever conceived. Please go play that. Its influences on Zero are prevalent in not only its pacing, but also in how the game's point of view doesn't always stick with its protagonist. Zero actually jumps around between the main cast, which allows the player to get a lot of differing perspectives on the unfolding events. Suzaha and Maho benefit the most from this, but a lot of side characters get their time in the spotlight. After completing a certain set of requirements which, again, have been streamlined from the original game, you're able to see the true ending. Even after all this time, I'm still of the opinion that the ending can be a little confusing and is kind of short. The game builds up a lot of interesting plot threads and does provide closure for pretty much all of them, but I do wish the length was more akin to the original's three hour long true ending. However, don't take this as me calling the ending bad, because that's far from the truth. Steins Gate Zero's true ending is the perfect conclusion to Beta Okabe's story. After gaining a lot more Psy ADV clout since my original review, I learned that some of the confusion people may have toward the ending tend to come from the game's slight reliance on untranslated side material. Still, even without that knowledge, Zero still delivers a thought-provoking and bittersweet final message. Simply put, I love Steins Gate Zero, flaws and all. I can't stress enough how much Steins Gate means to me and how it influenced my tastes. Zero took everything I loved about Steins Gate and expanded on it. While the execution can sometimes be a little iffy, the game's main theme of success being achieved through countless failure is delivered wonderfully. Zero explores a world fans never knew they wanted, and does it with the utmost respect to the original game. While I do wish a bit more was fixed from the team at Spike Chunsoft, I understand that some stuff might have probably been off limits. Despite that, this Steam port of Steins Gate Zero is the best official release of this game to date. Spike Chunsoft is working hard to give the Science Adventure series the chance it deserves, so please support Steins Gate Elite and Steins Gate Zero so their efforts don't go to waste. Who knows, if this port does well enough, they might even port over Chaos Child to Steam. I'll be direct with you, Spike Chunsoft. If you guys announce a Chaos Child port, I will literally cry. Even if you've already played Steins Gate Zero, I recommend supporting this release. You'll be able to experience this wonderful game all over again, and show Spike Chunsoft we believe in this series' future in the West. I give the Steam release of Steins Gate Zero an A-. Hey, Zerker, can we uh, switch the music up for the end sequence? Ah, alright, cool, thank you. So, we are now at the end of the video, which means, like always, time to thank some peeps. There are three people who helped make this video possible, and these people are Supreme Zerker, who is the best script editor in the world, my good buddy Riggs, who once again helped me fact check, and the supreme goodest lad, Soggy Sad Boy, who helped me out with the thumbnail. Thank you all so much, you guys are the best. Thanks again to Spike Chunsoft for providing me with the review copy of the game. Really excited to work with you guys more in the future. Finally, time for the self-shill. Okay, 
If you want more of me, you can follow me on Twitter and Twitch at DrCullenPhD. And if you're wondering what videos are coming out on the channel next, here's what's going on. Episode 2 of Absolute Zero is coming soon. The next major review I will be putting out is Atelier Lydian Suele. I probably said that wrong, but honestly, I don't care. And then Yakuza 6, Psychedelica of the Black Butterfly. And I'm also importing those Persona dancing games, so there's going to be a video on that as well. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. You guys have a fantastic rest of your day. Oh, should I say the thing again? Oh yeah, um... <clears throat> L. Pie. Kangaroo.